Hey everyone, Zian over here from Nintendo Life, and today I am not alone. I'm joined by my good friend, Kevin Kenson. The unofficial extra member of Nintendo Life specifically on call for Chrono Trigger discussions. It really has just worked out that way, hasn't it? Well, honestly, you're a pretty big fan of the series, aren't you? Aren't you, Kevin? You're not like the biggest fan, right? Or anything? There's plenty of very dedicated fans, and I happen to be one that you know. Which, by the way, all I know about why I'm here today is that we're talking about something Chrono Trigger related. You have kept me in the dark. Absolutely. So today, uh, since I haven't even mentioned this yet, today what we're here to do is we're going to chat about... A, uh, I don't want to call it a conspiracy theory because it's it's not I mean it's a little crazy but it's not it's not bad it's it's really it's just a good thing it's it's just a theory at the end we'll just we'll just cut the conspiracy it, it, it's a theory but it doesn't require a cork board with multiple strings attached to fifty different photos <laughs> well actually Kevin that now right. that you mention. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, are, you, are you dragging that out right now? Or are you about to bring this into in frame for me to see? I was actually <laughs> talking with a, a friend yesterday about this whole thing that we're doing here today. And he was uh, he was hoping we were going to do it in video so that way we could do something like that. But uh, <laughs> but so everyone everyone's aware, Kevin has no idea what we're about to talk about uh, in this discussion. I've got it all. I've got my theory jotted down and, and ready to go. But uh, but I thought it'd be fun kind of, you know, like, you know, when you used to go out in person and like maybe kick back a beer or, a, you know, chat with a coworker at work and you'd, you'd be you'd spend the day thinking all about something and then you'd you'd want to just like Ex explain it all to somebody who would potentially understand what you were talking about. That's. <laughs> That's who Kevin is right now. And thankfully, Kevin agreed to be here. I'm not even forcing him against his own will, right? Yes, I am here of my own volition as we have rehearsed. I mean, uh, oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> you did so well. Everybody who's been following Nintendo Life maybe saw that last last year in December, uh, we did a video where we talked all about Chrono Trigger because I just beat it last year and we brought Kevin along to come chat about it. Uh, and John was there as well. And it, it was a great time. During that time, we were kind of speculating about uh, where Chrono Trigger could go, uh, you know, where, why has it not released yet? Uh, we, we talked about this Chrono Cross remake. Uh, and now, Kevin, right, we finally know what's going on with Chrono Cross, don't we? We do. And it, it's finally, we're, we're getting basically like a, a, like a HD remaster, I suppose you could call it. I wouldn't say a remake, right? Because uh, it's it's more just like yeah. they cleaned everything up, I guess. But Yeah, basically. It's kind of like what they did with like a lot of the FF7 and 8 ports that were brought to modern systems. Really, the most exciting part about this port though is the inclusion of radical dreamers that's like the i don't think anyone even when they were talking about like you know the rumors of chrono cross the the radical dreamers aspect was never discussed i think in most rumors uh and so getting that game officially translated i mean the fact that we can say that a satella view game is now going to be playable in the west is so bizarre, but cool. Yeah, and I hope lots of you know what the Satella View is because it's very. Uh, it, this is crucial for N N Nintendo. Uh, <laughs> but but basically, back in the day, they had right like a um, uh, a service where you could connect to your Super Nin Super Famicom uh, in Japan to the internet, and you could download games to it. And that's that's where that Radical Dreamers comes from, right? Sort of, or was it like you streamed yep. them or yeah, no, or that something? was yeah, yeah, no, it was download. I mean, it was basically. I don't think it's the oldest example. I think there's another company out there that did something first, but the, the Satella view is like one of the earliest examples of companies trying to do a digital service for games. And so, yeah, the way it would work was it was an attachment that you could receive these broadcasts that would happen that would make a certain title available uh, and that would be on your Satella view to play. Uh, I forget the exact mechanism right now. I would have to brush up on it. I don't think you saved them to carts. It wasn't like that one service in Japan. I think it was like oh, right. saved to something internally in the Satella view, but there was still a limit to like how much total you could have. I, yeah, I don't remember all the full specifics, but a, a number of those games were just sort of like remix versions of previously existing titles. Like, oh, here's a Zelda game that's in Satella view, but it was basically like a remix of Link to the Past. Uh, but Radical Dreamers was like an entirely original title. It was like, kind. It, it was this pitched sequel sort of to Chrono Trigger, but it wasn't super obvious that it was initially. And it's this very strange piece of history that just never came to the West. And it served as the basis for what is now Chrono Cross. Super cool little hidden gem that we never got. So it's, it's been, the Switch has been out for five years now, right? Or a bit, five years in, in March. Be, yep. And, mm -hmm. and we're, we're finally getting Chrono, Chrono Cross. You know, I mean, we, Chrono Cross has been re-released on the, the play, PSN store before, uh, but, but, you know, now it's, it's finally getting this, this, uh, this, you know, new coat of paint. But Chrono Cross has never been really like 
regarded nearly as high as Chrono Trigger is. I mean, I feel like Chrono Cross has its fans and I played it back in the day briefly and I, I need to go play it again. Uh, but it's it feels strange that Chrono Trigger if it's still in in no shape or form is available on Switch or PlayStation 4 or 5 or Xbox. You know, it's it's on Steam and uh, it got a re-release on DS and it's on mobile and it has ways to play. But it's just, it's so odd to me that Chrono Cross is, is coming before Chrono Trigger. Had you asked me, you know, whatever, before we even had rumors of Chrono Cross, if you asked me two years ago, like, oh, do you think you'll see this game ported anytime soon? Especially when Square started going on their kind of porting spree that we've been seeing going on lately. Uh, I certainly would have thought that if we were going to get anything in the Chrono series, a, a port of Trigger, even just putting it on Nintendo Switch Online, really. I mean, looking at, you know, because th there are some RPGs that are on there. I mean, Breath of Fire uh, is on the uh, SNES one. Oh, you're right. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So it's not like that genre is off limits. Yeah, it has made no appearance on the Switch just yet. And Chrono Cross, I will say, when there was the rumors, there was a part of me that was a little more hopeful that it was maybe going to be not necessarily a full-blown, you know, FF7 remake-style remake, but I was wondering if maybe they would take it, like, an extra step further than what we're seeing right now, because arguably, yes, Chrono Cross does not have the same legacy as Chrono Trigger. It's not nearly as beloved. It's, it's quite a bit more of a divisive title. Uh... But there is a lot of quality there that I think that gets overlooked very often. And so I feel like something that was maybe a little more of a full, just a, a little heavier input remake could have been the kind of extra cleaning it needed. And kind of like um, uh, what we just saw with Skyward Sword, right? Like that was a port, but they still did a lot of updates that ended up, you know, removing a lot of the things that took away the fun of the game and let you get to the meat of it a lot faster. So I think it would have been really interesting to see Cross get that. Uh, so when I first heard Rumor of a Remake, I was like, oh, like this could actually be a really good thing. And I'm still excited we're getting it today. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it looks like it's a little more kind of straightforward. There's a couple little feature additions like, oh, you can turn off encounters. Uh, but you know, it's, it's a very, for the most part, pretty straightforward looking port. Yeah. And I, I do, I think it would have been cool to see like the Trials of Mana team, you know, and go and tackle it or, or just like a team like that. Uh, maybe have Triace do something with it uh, or, you know, just one of I don't know, have have one of other squares in-house uh, departments work on on something like bigger for it. But that's kind of that that thought about, you know, like why Chrono Cross is coming out in this form. Why is Chrono Cross coming back in general? Uh, why is why are we getting radical dreamers? Why is uh, why is this effort being put into this game? And where is Chrono Trigger is kind of where. Uh, this this idea spawned, and so I'm 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 just gonna I'm just gonna spew this at you now for a little bit. So if you have questions, go for it. Uh, feel free to feel free to stop me. No no no, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go to your to you just pass out from air loss. Like go for it. Just like talk as much as you can. That's honestly it might it might happen. You 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 know me. <laughs> okay, so Chrono the Chrono Cross remaster is coming, right? Chrono Trigger still is non Switch. There is the argument to be said that. Maybe Square wants to put Chrono Cross out uh, before they put uh, Cro Chrono Trigger onto the, the Switch eShop, so that way it helps improve sales. Because I think, I think if Chrono Trigger comes before Chrono Cross, I feel like more people are going to just play Chrono Trigger instead because they have the option. You know, if 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 at the point that both of them are available, if Chrono Trigger was made available first. I think Chrono Cross just like wouldn't stand a chance at the end of the day. And so that got me thinking though as well, like. You know, with with Final Fantasy VII, you know, we we've seen Final Fantasy VII digitally remastered uh, and released on. Uh, d did that just come out on PlayStation Four? That wasn't PS3 too, was it? From what you remember? The oh, like the the port of FF7. Yeah, I I believe that was a PS4 specific thing. I think PS3 had a digital version of FF7, but it was the oh, you're just right, straight up. It, it, yeah, because PS3 had all those PS1 and PS2 classics that were just here's you know emulating that game. Um, but the technical you know, port one that added, you know, increasing battle speed and all that kind of stuff. Uh, that is, uh, that was a PS4 and like a, you know, current slash this just past gen uh, release. Okay. Yeah. And so I guess with that as well, you know, we, so we saw that that Final Fantasy uh, 7 port came to, you know, it came to a number of consoles. It's even on Switch right now too. Uh, but then we still got the Final Fantasy 7 remake, you know, that, that didn't shut down the idea of there being, uh, you know, like a, a port and a remake. Uh, they, they both can still they can still happen. Yeah. Um, but my my thoughts aren't that Chrono Cross is I don't think Chrono Cross is going to get fully remade. I really think 
and this is it's just it's just a theory there I have no insider I, I should have said this before I have no insider evidence I, I, I have nothing but some online uh, facts that I will spit at you but I, I feel like there's a good chance that next year Chrono Trigger could get a full-blown remake and I, I hope it's in uh, its classic style uh, and and my reasoning for thinking that entirely falls on one little RPG company uh, do you know what company that might be, Kevin? That's okay if you don't. Uh, a specific RPG company? I mean, I assume it's a dev team underneath uh, Square. Yeah, it's, one one might almost say that they're a factory. Yeah, okay, I, that was going to be my guess. I was like, because you're either going to take this the HD 2D route with Team Asano, or you're going to say RPG Factory, whose expressed reason for existing was to make a not Chrono Trigger game that was fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I am Setsuna for anyone who doesn't know what I'm talking about. Like, that was, it was, it was good. The music was my favorite part. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, the music in that is, is beautiful. Uh, incredible soundtrack. Exactly. You're exactly right, Kevin. And and so so where Kevin's going... Where you're where, going. With, <laughs> yes. Where, uh, you're right. I'm, I'm not trying to shove this onto you now. Am I? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, so, so Tokyo RPG Factory, uh, it was like, like Kevin was like Kevin was saying as well, uh, was a studio that was created by Square Enix during maybe it was 2014 or 15 to I, maybe that's when they were formed at least. I, yeah, and honestly, I feel like they weren't actively talked about till probably like 2016, okay. 17. Because I Am Setsuna was like a 17 release, right? 17 or 18? So uh, I Am Setsuna came out in 2016 in Japan, uh, and then Lost Fear came out in 2017 in Japan. But then I think it was about a year later gotcha. uh, for uh, for the US and or the West in general. That sounds but, right. But so, yeah, so kind of like we were saying, those those this this company was, was created uh, during a time where Square Enix was putting such a focus on like uh, third person and uh, maybe, maybe not first person, but more action focused games. And they were kind of losing touch with what uh, you know made them a company in the first place and so they they created this company to try and uh, you know just like give back to the people that have uh, you know stuck with them all along uh, and also just kind of make those those kinds of games again and so they made uh, I am Setsuna which is basically like uh, gameplay wise uh, is is like Chrono Trigger with the like the the um, having multiple characters on the field and, and being able to do like cross attacks and uh, story wise I don't think I don't think there's any connections at all to my knowledge because there's no besides the Square Enix name. I think that's or SquareSoft even at that point. Uh, I think that's the only real connections. But then Lost Sphere as well that they put out. I've heard that that's a it follows a similar combat style, but I've never played it. Yeah, Lost Sphere got a little more experimental. It like drifted a little further away from the Chrono Trigger battle style. Okay, but it's still definitely kind of rooted in that. And then they went very far off with, uh, what was it, Oninaki? Is that the name? Exactly. Yep. Now. Yeah. And that one was more action RPG uh, kind of top-down style. Yeah. And that released in 2019. And unfortunately, what, what happened with that, uh, with with uh, Square Enix and, and Tokyo RPG Factory, is that I think it was in 2019 or 2020, Square uh, announced during one of their corporate meetings that, or a business you know, meeting that... Uh, an investor meeting that's what i'm looking for uh <laughs> the word during an investor meeting they announced that uh that tokyo rpg factory's games that they had released were basically all like financial failures for square and so it's there's so many little little parts here that i'm just like where do i take this uh or wh when when do i you know but of course some my thought with all of this now is that there's potential that Tokyo RPG Factory could be working on something big and that big thing i'm hoping is just a chrono trigger remake because this studio has proven that they they can make games successfully with a lot of heart uh but sometimes like i think i am setsuna's problem for me was that the world was just a little bit too boring and bland and i think they really got a leg up on that with oninaki uh and i i never finished that game so i can't fully uh give my opinions on it i suppose and uh but uh but it just i, I feel like they were they were they were getting on the right track but I feel like just a lot of people didn't care about their yeah. games either. Right. I'm in a very similar boat, to be honest. I played the demo for Onanaki when it came out, but I never actually played through it. Uh, from what I understand from other people I know who have played through, you know, multiple of these titles, uh, the kind of flow argument I've heard is, you know, I Am Setsuna's great. Lost Fear kind of gets lost in the weeds a little bit too much. And then Onanaki is like, okay, now we're now we're getting a rhythm here. Like there's there's improvements and there's good ideas really starting to form. Because uh, really one of the complaints, it, it, a, a lot of people like to sometimes poke fun at uh, RPG Factory in terms of 
basically saying that they live up to the factory aspect of things where you know it's like yes you're making these things that are there's some cool aspects that are nods to nostalgia and things from our childhood and games that we loved but ultimately there's something about it that's just off like it just feels more like a fabrication of trying to do that stuff than something that just feels that way from the core right yeah yeah which is you know i i I, I, not to discredit like all the work that that team puts in because I did like I Am Setsuna um, but it certainly did not have the same kind of impact as the games that it was kind of referencing as its source material. Yeah, it, it does feel like a like I Am Setsuna feels kind of a lot like a like a seven a seven kind of game uh, in the definition that it it has reasons that you like you can walk away from it having a good time or like a memorable experience but when you when you put it up next to so many other great rpgs it just doesn't really have enough to really stand out uh like this like the soundtrack you can just listen to without the game uh, which i do all the time Uh, and that's why i talk about the soundtrack so much (laughs) but uh so my, my thought with that as well is that so Square Enix, you know, like they, they've said that that Tokyo RPG Factory is not pulling in, in any money, but they've they've proven that they know how to make games. Mm-hmm. And so why not give them a property that they know will be successful and that they won't screw up, <laughs> especially if you get the right art team in there. Like uh, imagine if, if they had the uh, like the Trials of Mana team to come in and and design, uh, you know, character models and kind of match that um, uh, Akira Toriyama. That's that's the art or the, the lead artist, yes. right? Yeah, like yeah, have him yeah, come yeah. in. There's someone with Goku hair. Someone's <laughs> vaguely Bulma. Like it's yeah, it's 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 Toriyama for sure. <laughs> but but the other the, another big reason why I feel so strongly about this because I'm I'm not just pulling you in, Kevin, for just like this mild speculation <laughs> here. Like I have some some evidence, you know, to that that what's, leads. What's the me. smoking gun? Get get. Give me the smoking gun. What is it? So the the <laughs> big thing that I think is if if you are, are you familiar with Moby MobyGames.com? Have you heard of those this website at all or referenced yes. it? So so for anyone unaware, Moby Games is basically the I am to my knowledge, it's like the IMDB of of the video game universe. You can go and search a video game or you can search a, an art director or, or a producer or something and you'll find credits for all of the games that they've made. Uh, and so if we actually go on on Moby Games' website, we see the three games that they've worked on, I Am Setsuna, Lost Sphere, and Oninaki. Uh, and specifically, if you, if you, like, you don't have to do this, Kevin, because uh, I've already done it. <laughs> um, but if, if anyone wants to fact check me, please go ahead. But the director, the writer, uh, I think most of most of the main, like the, I think the the producer as well, like most of the the main team that have worked on those three games, don't have any credits for any other games the past, basically since Oninaki came out. And that, uh, like we said, that came out in 2019. So that's that was two and a half years ago now that those that we've just heard nothing from them. Which also, those developers have to, like, okay, if you're if you're a director of a video game, if, if Tokyo RPG Factory closed up, or if a bunch of people got fired and let go, you're probably going to do your best to try and find another company to go work for, because making games is fun, but it's also their job. And it's how they put food on the table and, like, uh, keep a, a roof over their head. Uh, so mm. I, I, I find it odd that none of these developers have announced uh, anything else, you know, new here. Uh, which, honestly... That doesn't really lead us uh, down the Chrono Trigger path necessarily at all. There's there's no evidence for that there, uh, other than the fact that I feel like Tokyo RPG Factory is the perfect studio to do this. Uh, and I also feel that like Chrono Cross, I don't really understand why we're getting this. Uh, beyond, I will say that this year and even last year, you know, like I think if Square Enix wanted to release a Chrono Trigger remake, you know, they did it on DS very... I mean, I wouldn't even say it's a remake. I think it's just like a... Port with some bonuses. Yeah. Like, here's a couple extra little things. Yeah, you know, so so Square Enix has been extremely busy with Kingdom Hearts 3, with Final Fantasy VII Remake. Now, this year marks the 20th anniversary of Kingdom Hearts and the 25th anniversary of Final Fantasy VII. And so the reason I also feel like it's not going to happen this year uh, is just because... They're, they're too busy. There's too many other things going on. And we also yeah, live in... 16 is still on the way. Yeah. Like yeah. There's, there's a lot happening. You're absolutely yeah. right. And and the 
the other thing that like just leads me to believe that this is like that this isn't the most outlandish idea ever is because we keep seeing all of these crazy weird remakes and ports of games that we never would have expected like kevin i can't believe we live in a world where trials of mana not only got an english official translation uh in a, a big collection where it was like an affordable price for everyone to pay uh we also got a full-blown remake of that game uh which the west had like barely even like that that was that was the the time yeah. when the name was created otherwise it was like seiken then setsu 3 or something i yep. i probably butchered that but that's that's about right yeah seiken then setsu 3 yeah it's a uh, look they've been on fire with this stuff right this is one of the things that i've been saying a lot about square the last few years is that their current dedication you know say what you will about the quality of each individual remaster because sometimes there are certain things that i think are left to be desired i know i saw a few negative reactions to the chrono cross reveal in terms of just how the visuals looked and you know what was crisp up but in terms of the number of titles and the kind of additional effort going into some of these as far as restoration and things that we never got uh, as you said trials of mana got an actual translation we got an english title with trials of mana because that was never called that before uh, it got a full-blown actual remake uh, saga frontier got cut content restored i mean this is a game that came out on the ps1 and there was a whole character scenario that did not make the final launch and they just went ahead and finished it and added it to this re-release that we got recently live alive was one of the big surprises of this last direct where i still can't actually believe this is happening where not only is it getting translated and brought to the west but it's an hd 2d style game that also looks like they're taking a few extra liberties based on what i at least remember from the game and what was shown in that trailer uh oh, cool okay yeah it, it seems like there's a lot of work going into that so i do agree that in general uh square right now is very very happy with doing lots of ports slash remaster slash remake like some varying tier of that because we've been getting so much stuff the saga series uh all a bunch of the mana games like lots of stuff has been coming to modern platforms that no one would have expected five years ago, right? Like, if, if you said, if you brought up most of these games in regular talks five years ago, people would be like, yeah, there's no way that's coming to the West, or there's no way we're going to get some kind of remake of that. Totally. Like, it's, it's, this was completely unpredictable uh, five years ago. And so on the subject of something like a Chrono Trigger remake, I, you know, this is the kind of thing where I, I will say personally, I'm the kind of person where I don't love diving into conspiracy theories because sometimes the right people get into their head too much that like yes this is absolutely how it's going to be they called it they found it like no 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 like we're still just we're just working with what's around and maybe you know there's yeah, enough thread yeah. here that maybe this could make sense and the thing about the Tokyo RPG Factory thing right is that as you mentioned bad sales and at least in terms of public knowledge, that studio has not been closed down. And as you pointed out, no one from that team has been actively working, well, at least, you know, publicly been working on anything else. Sure. So the implication there, right, is that Tokyo RPG Factory could in fact be working on something, but if they are, the turnaround window for this has been longer than past, right? Because all those other games were, what, a year and a half apart? Yeah, yeah, they were all pretty close, besides like Lost Sphere, but maybe that was only because it, it maybe it used the same exact engine and, and framework, you know, of, of yeah, I'm Setsuna. It's very, very similar to, yeah, the visual, like, it's definitely the same base engine. So, yeah, uh, there's something to be said for the idea that, you know, assuming they just haven't been closed down and that was never made, like, publicly announced or something, the assumption would be that they are working on something and it is taking more time than their previous works. That does not necessarily, again, mean that it is a Chrono Trigger remake, but if, some, if a Chrono Trigger remake was something that Square was trying to hand to someone, that is something that would probably want to have a little more time baked into it, right? That's not going to be something where they're like, all right, here's the stuff, get it out next year. Sure, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I would hope at least would not be the approach. Yeah, and that, and, and that's, uh, I think that's kind of the angle that I'm coming from as well, by the way, too, which I uh, I should specify that I don't think this is 100% happening. You know, I'm not, um, I'm not, I, I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want news websites, listen here, punks. I don't want news websites coming out here reporting on this. There's nothing here besides mild speculation and fun. So I'm glad you see it that way as well, that it is, because uh, at, at the end of the day, that's that's all I wanted this to be was just some fun. Uh, and I, yeah. I don't think you're, you're, no, not, sure. you're not shaking it down a different way. <laughs> I just I just started realizing that maybe I um maybe I came off a little uh, too confident with it. No, 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 <laughs> you're, you're ex no, no, you're excited. And I and I appreciate this, uh, especially as, as a as a newfound fan, you know, finishing <laughs> Chrono Trigger last year. And, and really, I, I think where my brain then goes is 
you know, we can only speculate so much as far as whether or not this is a thing that could be happening. You know, I do agree as well that it's a little weird that Chrono Cross... You know, here's the interesting thing about the Chrono Cross promotion too, right? It's not just that it's getting remade. There's been a little bit of... Ex as far as I can tell, at least, there's been a little bit of extra love going towards this in terms of cross promotions. Uh, like when Trials of Mana came out, there wasn't like we got 50 million different mobile game, you know, crossovers and stuff too. Whereas with Chrono Cross, before we even had this remake confirmed, we got a crossover with, I can't remember the name right now. It's a, it's a mobile game. It was game. Another gotcha. Eden. I think another that, Eden. that one yes. that, like I keep, I have it on my phone and yeah. never booted it up. <laughs> I, I've started it multiple times and I just, it, mobile RPGs just never hold me that long. But yeah, like there's definitely been a little extra vibe lately in terms of them trying to get people interested in this franchise. And so, yeah, not only remaking Chrono Cross, adding in Radical Dreamers, uh, not doing just simply Chrono Trigger yet. That's interesting, right? Yeah, totally. Okay, so it's my turn to put the tinfoil hat on real quick because just talking about this whole Chrono Trigger situation, something that has occurred to me is that as part of advertising Chrono Cross, Square has opened up a dedicated Twitter account. And what's interesting about this is that it's not called Chrono Cross. It's just called Chrono Game. Oh. Which could imply that they're planning on using this account to kind of advertise other Chrono series related things, whether that's a actual new game or another remake or port of Chrono Trigger. Now, there's a sensible side to this as well. Uh, if you look into it, there's actually a Chrono Cross account that exists already on Twitter. That's a lockdown account. Uh, I don't know the full logistics behind trying to get account names, so it's possible that maybe Square Enix didn't want to deal with that and they just want the Chrono game route, but they could have also still just done Chrono Cross game. I I don't know. It's definitely something that I don't think is any kind of for sure sign of other Chrono content coming in the future, but it feels like an extra step more than they usually take for one-off remakes or ports. I suppose I, I totally see what you mean, that they could, in theory, rebrand this Chrono game account to something other than Chrono Cross at some point down the road. If they were to do a Chrono Trigger remake, maybe they would shift it to Chrono Trigger uh, focused, you know, like they would change the uh, the user, not the username, but the um, but they would change the branding of everything to Chrono Trigger instead. Or maybe, they, maybe it would just be like a one-stop shop for uh, all Chrono related news. Uh, that is really interesting though. Look at you. Now, I do think that a lot of people are going to come back at this discussion and say that they would prefer to see Chrono Trigger remade in a different style, not the mm -hmm. Tokyo RPG Factory style. And so I wonder, like, do you, would you prefer to see like the HD 2D uh, remake route instead? Well, where do you, what do you feel? Yeah, no, so I was thinking about that a little bit when you were bringing up the idea, because that, that's actually the direction I was thinking of taking things is like, you know, let's not necessarily assume this happening, but if we're going to toy with the notion of it happening, like what form exactly would a remake take? If the assumption is that it's RPG Factory, it would make sense they would try to continue to do that same kind of art style, which would lend itself again to a little more cartoony vibe, a little bit kind of what we saw with Trials of Mana, as well as the Secret of Mana remake that no one likes to talk about nearly as much. That's right. Because uh, it was a little rougher around the edges. I would say personally... If I if it had to be remade, right? If it wasn't just like no, keep the visuals, keep it keep it pure. Uh, if, if we were going to talk about having to have some kind of remade visuals, personally, I think I would lean a little more in the HD two D direction. Uh, and this is something that Square is messing with across multiple titles, right? I mean, Team Asano is sort of the main company pushing it in terms of releases so far with Octopath Traveler, what we're getting with Triangle Strategy soon. But even uh, the Pixel Remasters, FF6 Remaster actually has a little bit of HD 2D uh, incorporated into the opera scene. Uh, and then I, I forget, one of the Dragon Quests is getting remade and it's getting HD 2D oh, yeah. treatment. Is it Dragon Quest 3? You're right. Yep, absolutely. So it, Square's obviously, uh, I think Octopath Traveler was the test to see if people liked that visual style in the first place. And now it seems like they're testing the waters with incorporating it into other franchises. So even if, you know, you wanted to assume RPG Factory could work on this, I think there is a room for argument of, well, Square likes the reaction that HD 2D is getting and that might be the start putting it on everything kind of thing, you know? The other thing that would be interesting to me is if you would remake something that has the kind of history that Chrono Trigger does, especially with a game that at its core in the first place already deals with time travel, is this a situation where it is a faithful one-to-one -one remake or is this more of an FF7 remake type of situation? Because at, at the end of the day too, kind of like what you said with FF7, there's nothing stopping them from 
also just having the original version of the game available in some way, right? They could port, uh, they, they could release Chrono Trigger and then be like, by the way, we're releasing an actual full-blown remake, you know, in a year and a half, two years time or whatever. Uh, even another example, this isn't Square, but a, a, another, you know, idea of this trend, uh, all the heavy rumors that have existed about Resident Evil 4 getting remade. And, and some people are very passionate about some of the changes that are rumored as part of that. And I feel the need to remind them, Resident Evil 4, the original, is on PS4. Right. And everything. Like, it's on modern systems. It is available. You can get it right now on a modern platform digitally, if you, and physically in many cases as well. Uh, so that would exist side by side with this remake, you know, and as happened with FF7 and FF7 remake. So I, I would be very curious to see what the goal and direction would be if they did a Chrono Trick remake, right? Is it, we just want to make a faithful pretty adaptation that maybe adds a couple extra little things kind of like the ds one did or is it like hey we're gonna get weird with this and there's we'll, we'll port chrono trigger so that's there too so you're happy but we're gonna get a little weird with what we do with this remake because you know with all the liberties that seven remake took you know chrono trigger again time travel is a central part of the plot you could do all kinds of silly things with that. I mean, that's exactly what Chrono Cross is for the most part. I know you haven't actually played with it yet, uh, but, but Chrono Cross, part of why it, I think it has some of the reaction it does, aside from, you know, gameplay differences and whatever, if you want to say quality changes as well, uh, is just the fact that some of the ways they kind of incorporate time travel into the storyline and how it kind of sets the scene and, and backstory for Chrono Cross gets very convoluted and weird in some parts. Okay. Aren't there like, did I hear that there's like 30 or 40 different characters in that game? Like, I mean, you don't have to juggle. Yeah, but... that's that's another kind of problem. Yeah. <laughs> that's another debatable issue. Uh, I, yeah, I feel like we could have a whole talk about I mean, how I guess Suikoden has like 100 characters, right? Like, so... <laughs> yeah, it's just, it, it feels more out of place, I guess, in Chrono Cross. Okay. Because the thing Chrono Cross does is it has cast members that are actually related to the plot and feel interesting and they're like, oh, maybe I want to have this person on my party. And then there'll be like, hey, you ran into this luchador priest and he's down to join you because reasons. And you just have a luchador priest or an undead skeleton clown. Wow. Or a baby dragon. No, like there's, there's a very heavy mixture of, you know, this character's here for plot reasons and this is their plot. And then there's just like, you found a lost alien and he joins your party. <laughs> he's really cute. Like that's just what... That, that's the mixture of party members in Chrono Cross. They can't put this concept <laughs> art to waste, Kevin. They have to include everyone. Exactly. Yeah. And so that's why Cross gets a little, I, I think sometimes it doesn't work well with people because uh, the cast was so large, but it kind of felt not fleshed out at the same time. Uh, that and one of the things it did that was like, it's one of these things where it's a cool idea, but then in execution, it's kind of like, ah, maybe not, is the way it handled having so many characters Basically, they had a scripting tool where it would take a base script, like a base dialogue line, and then it would just be like, oh, it's this character? Add these speaking patterns to it. Like, oh, this person does a lot of like shortened hand words, or this person has gurgle sounds between their words, whatever. So you'd have scenes where no matter who was in your party, they would say the exact same thing. They would just say it the way that character would. Oh, no. Yeah, and so it would lead to very weird things where it kind of felt like, cool, I guess I'm glad I brought this character along so they could say the same thing that anyone else would have. Mm -hmm. it, it just felt like it reduced character personalities a little bit as well. That being said, I still love Chrono Cross, but it's, it's, it is a very different experience. Well, I, I look <laughs> forward to giving it a shot uh, eventually. I, I, don't, I don't even remember when this comes out. April? It's, it's somewhere in that range. Yeah, I forget right now because a lot of those really, like so much of the direct is April to July and it's just melding together in my brain. Yeah. I feel like April's correct. I think April, I, I want, for some reason, I want to say April 14th. I, now you got to look it up just to see if I just to see if I called it somehow, if my brain works that well. It's April 7th. There it is. <laughs> ah, I was a week off. I was so close. Darn. I was even the right That's day of the right. week. <laughs> One other thing that I wanted to mention as well is that some, some people might in the comments might uh, might point this out already as well and be like, well, what about this? So I, I just want to make sure we I bring it up at least. So mm -hmm. I completely forgot about this until I was talking with a friend uh, just the other day. But do you remember that there's that Final Fantasy VII, like, turn-based RPG remake coming out as well. It's called like, I think it's Ever Crisis. It's the mobile version. Yeah. It's kind of like when FF15 got a mobile version, but they did a heavy graphics change. This time it's keeping the kind of visuals, I'm sure adjusting it to make still work better on, you know, phones. Uh, but it's 
replacing the combat system with a more traditional feeling turn based. Correct. Turn, correct? Yep, ab- absolutely. And so the, the the main like the battles themselves or at least the uh, the boss battles it seems appear to use the graphical style of Final Fantasy 7 uh, or Final Fantasy 7 remake rather, but then when you're running around in the overworld like exploring and talking with NPCs, that uses kind of a more chibi style mm. uh very very similar to I am Setsuna. And uh and when I was looking at this or even actually just all of Tokyo RPG Factories, that that's what this looks like. Uh and so I thought this was going to be just like a, a, a just a huge like knife in my in my uh theory here you know i thought it was going to completely destroy all of it uh but it's actually being made by a completely different uh studio called aptly bot uh and they've worked on a bunch of mobile games for square enix uh they i think they did like the near yes i definitely okay heard that. i had never heard of them before uh but yeah you're, you're totally right like they've they've been around and have been doing other things and it appears that they're just working on that uh now i will say though it there it's definitely a possibility that uh, Square could have pulled some of the RPG Factory team to go work on this, and maybe that's why it shares some styles. But it's also, at the end of the day, probably not too hard to mimic what uh, RPG Factory has created, since they kind of also were born off of the ideas of other people as well, you know. But uh, but I will say that just the some of the like the menus and the uh, the character. Um, the character models look very reminiscent of RPG Factory's work. So maybe at the end of the day, uh, my hope, my hopes and dreams of a Chrono Trigger remake by them will be completely shattered. <laughs> uh, and and that's that's fine. You know, maybe next year they'll uh, Moby games will be updated and <laughs> all of them will be tied to this game. But uh, at least I got that out there as well as just another tidbit of information. <laughs> yeah, but it's all a very interesting thought exercise, right? Because... Uh... I forget if it was you I was having this back and forth with on Twitter recently, uh, but just, you know, especially with the Live Alive translation getting confirmed. Yeah. Uh, it just seems like the floodgates are, like we already knew Square was getting really into sort of just mining that, you know, all, all that SNES PS1 era RPGs that they have in their catalog. And Live Alive is almost like a whole new tier of like, wow, they're really digging that deep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, sure, like, I'm, I'm in. Like, we're getting that in Radical Dreamers? I'd be awesome. Uh, and, and so, yeah, it really does raise the question, I think, of how far are they willi- How far are they going to go with this, right? Because uh, we already have some remakes of some SNES games, like with Trials of Mana. Live Alive, while maintaining an HD 2D style, is definitely a remake. You know, that that's that the game did not look like that at all originally, aside from being pixels. What, it didn't look like that on the Super Famicom? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just a little different. And so, yeah, like if they're putting that much effort into some of those older games, you know, I think an argument could be made for a lot of the older FF titles have been remade or re-released enough times in their own way that that doesn't necessarily feel as unique and special. And so Chrono Trigger does certainly exist as a certain, like, that's a title that if they were going to maybe put a little, you know, put even more effort into bringing back in some form, that would be the one to do it with, right? I mean, that and Dragon Quest Three, which we do know is happening. Yeah, oftentimes when it comes to, you know, remaking a game and, and and why haven't we seen, why haven't we seen this or that? I think usually there's something controversial holding it back, like Mother 3, or there's licensing issues. And I think th- there's something to be said maybe about uh, Square uh, having uh, a few hoops to jump through as far as bringing Chrono Trigger back goes. But we know that they still work with for the most part, I think the majority of people that have worked on or th- that, you know, kind of helped birth that game in, in the beginning anyways. Like, uh, I know Nobu was not like the the main composer for Chrono, but like he's still around and did stuff for Final Fantasy VII Remake, I believe. And Akira Toriyama still mm-hmm. uh, is around, you know, I- exists and, and works on Dragon Quest here and there. And um, yeah. and most most of them make games. Yeah, and I believe the lead composer, uh, well, I'm having the worst brain fart right now because I, I, I love his work and I just can't remember the name right I now. I can't. Um, it's, not, it's not Mitsuda, was it? It's Mitsuda. Yeah, it is Mitsuda. Okay. Um, wow. Thank you. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, no, Mitsuda. Mitsuda still works with with Square on occasion as well, I believe. Okay, cool. So yeah, I, composer-wise, it's fine. And I mean, really, I, I would say the, the the biggest thing missing would be Sakaguchi, right? Because he's just oh, he's he's off right. doing his own thing with his own company now. Dragon Quest like lead guy from back then. He's is, is he still working I with think... Square? I haven't actually looked at his credits lately. Because that's the thing, right? The, part of the thing that made Chrono Trigger so special is that it was sort of this rock star team of the best of the Final Fantasy Square devs and the best of Dragon Quest devs. And all of that is underneath Square anyways now, so... Yeah, I forgot Sakaguchi, you're totally right, like made that um, 
that like little model Fantasia or Fantasian or something, I think. But it looks like um, Yuji Hori. I think is who you're, is that who you were thinking of for Dragon Quest? I think okay. so. Yeah, yeah it, it looks yes. like he's still there and he he worked on Dragon Quest Eleven. So yeah, it, it it doesn't really feel like it's just out of the question. And I think you're onto like the big potentially the whole reason why this conversation is even happening is because we are like you said we're getting so many other remakes from Square that it just feels like yeah. like if we can get a Live Alive, Live a Live, Live a Live, whatever it's called remake. <laughs> uh, can't Chrono Trigger come back too? Like, can't that be like a realistic thing? You know, it would certainly explain outside of legal issues uh, why Chrono Trigger has not been brought back in any form yet either, right? Aside from maybe the idea of oh, cross the cell better if that one's first, you know, which is a, bit, a perfectly possible valid reason as well. Because yeah, with how much stuff has come back, it's kind of strange that you know it's weird that we got Legend of Mana, most of the Mana series, yeah. tons of Saga games, and Front Missions coming back. Front Missions like, coming why? back. I, Why is Front Mission coming back? I'm not mad. I just don't understand what, what, who was like, yeah, um, let's let's look at all the other games that we that we have that we could bring over. Like, you know, I don't know, port some Star Oceans to Switch even well, too. Besides, I mean, we got the first we one. We got First Departure, yeah. And I, I'm starting to probably make it sound like I don't want Front Mission on Switch. I do. I just, <laughs> uh, I think it just adds more credibility to uh, to to this happening. How much stuff is getting brought yeah, back? Yeah, yeah. And I think you remember at the beginning uh, of this discussion how you you asked if I was gonna like pull up a, a big board with like a bunch of like you know red yarn like uh, leading to like all these different notes connecting all the dots and things like that. I think. Do I remember thirty minutes ago? Yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> no. a, a lot has basically a lot has been laid out on the table, and I think it's cool. It's it's this cool that we can <laughs> we actually almost can trace back like so many different things because you I mentioned right at the beginning of this that. It's weird that it's been five years and Chrono Trigger isn't on Switch yet. And you just referenced that again, like they have to be doing, well, you didn't say that they have to be, but it would make sense that they'd be spending more time with Chrono Trigger than potentially other projects. And maybe that's a uh, part of why we haven't seen it. Plus, of course, you know, the world's been experiencing a pandemic uh, and, you know, maybe, maybe there was something in the oven for a little while, but they had to push everything back because everything had to be completely, you know, everybody had to learn how to work from home and, I, I feel like you know, the world is just kind of a few years behind on certain productions and things. And so, I don't know. I just, it doesn't feel like out of the question. And I, I'm, I'm glad that, I'm glad that we can be here if it, if it, yeah. even if it's not Tokyo RPG Factory. I just wanted us to be here. Uh, that way, when something does, uh, someone can come back. We can point back to this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Instead of, instead, then I don't have to be like, hold it. Hey, Jim. Jim, remember, remember that time I told you about that Chrono Trigger thing? He'd be like, I don't know what you're talking about at all. Like now, now, yeah. now it's right now. now we're, it's here. Yeah, right now we're being very humble and controlled. Like, look, we're just talking. <laughs> we, this is probably not even happening. Who knows? And then if that actually did happen, we'd be like, oh yeah, we called it for sure. <laughs> Our confidence back then. Oh yeah, I mean, just knew it. We saw, we saw the signs. You know, before anyone else. How did you know? Like we, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's 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 a it's certainly a fun thought experiment, and I would. Uh, very much hope for some form of this to be true. And and we will find out in two to three years times, I guess, if, Perfect. That's, if that's when it would happen. Who knows? <laughs> that sounds that sounds fair. Because, yeah, and, and I, I do want to stress again that I, I don't think, please, nobody uh, go on the Internet and say that, that Kevin and Zeon uh, told you that Chrono Trigger is <laughs> coming back because we didn't. Uh, I don't even know if I'm going to put Chrono Trigger in the title of this video because I don't want, like, someone to see it and, and then think. They read a headline somewhere that Chrono Trigger is coming back. <laughs> Before we wrap this up, is is there a way that you want to see this series, you know, like if it were to get brought back in a, with a new coat of paint, you know, would you want to see the right. Final Fantasy VII remake route where they try something new? Or do you want a faithful remake that looks, uh, you know, slightly different, but still holds on to that, uh, that, that feeling of the first game? Yeah, you know, I, I think it's... Uh especially right now when it's all talk, right? There are so many situations where you can be like, oh, well, I think this idea is dumb or I would love to see this. And then when the release happens, you'll completely 180 your position, right? There's plenty of times where you'll be like, oh, I want a remake that's this style and this style and does this. And then when they finally make a game that way, you're like, ah, I guess I was wrong. I didn't want that. I, I oops, <laughs> you know? And then the other way where you think something sounds terrible and then when, the moment you play it, you're like, oh wait, okay, yeah, this was a great idea. I'm glad they made this. So, you know, just kind of going off my own, if there was a port alongside it like if we still had an accessible current way of playing chrono trigger on modern systems because at the end of the day as long as that is available in some kind of way i'm happy if if that was a part of the deal i think i would be receptive to like 
let's get a little experimental. Let's get a little weird. Because ultimately, you count it as something else, right? Like, no, especially with the liberties it took, no one's going to say that FF7 Remake and FF7 are interchangeable same experiences. They're not, <laughs> remotely. Yeah, as long as the original game is made available in some form, I think I would be receptive to them getting freaky with it. If, if instead they wanted to do like, no, this is the definitive new way that you should play this game, forget about the old <laughs> one, uh, then I would be much more like, Throw it ah, out, Kevin, throw it know, out. Maybe... Maybe maybe HD 2D and keeping everything else intact could be cool, you know? Like, I could I could maybe get down with, like, going with that new visual style, but still leaving the rest intact. Yeah, I think that's where my stance is. I, as long as the older one's available, I'm down for them to try something new at the same time. I think I think that's fair. And I, I, based on the, the track record, you know, like with, with Final Fantasy VII, as, just as an example, I think it, it would be realistic to see if they do something weird that they would bring back the original to uh, maybe, maybe, maybe early to help promote, you know, the new one that's coming out eventually too. Because I think that's kind of what happened with Trials of Mana, now that I think about it too, was mm -hmm. we got the, the collection, right? Like yep. uh, uh, eight months or something like that before before the, the Trials remake hit. And, and, and part of- Yeah, they were announced side by side yeah oh yeah that's right at e3 part of me thought in the moment too that like everyone was going to buy the collection of mana and then not buy trials because they, they were going to get their fill uh but i don't think that really happened i never heard any complaints about like that game not you know uh not meeting expectations i'm not sure where it eventually fell but uh but maybe square wouldn't be worried about it too well, Kevin, it's been it's been a great time. Thank you for coming on for this chat again. It's it's always a pleasure. Obviously, we could talk forever, but we will. It, now is a good time. I, I love our short twenty minute chats. <laughs> our short short twenty minute chats. That that's I I love that. We'll we'll stick with that. Uh, so I, I know lots of people already that are have probably made it to the end of this video know uh, where to find you. But uh, but what well what, what what kind of videos do you make these days? You've been you've been doing some stuff that I feel like might intrigue uh, the people that have been that made it to the end of this. I don't know, man. I'm all over the place. Place right now. Oh man, I, <laughs> you're I'm, still I'm, like a I'm making, the Howler video, and I'm just I, yeah, I'm just I'm all over the place at the moment. I'm messing around with some stuff. I channel name is Kevin Kenson. Traditionally, I do mostly like news and hardware type stuff, but I'm trying to get into more uh, actively sort of game specific type content. Uh, I did a review of Sifu recently. I did some coverage of Mina the Hollower because I got a chance to play uh, an early demo of it, which is fantastic. I've got a couple other ideas in the works right now that I'm still going to do some of my traditional content mixed in there, which is going to be the next few uploads. But I got, I got a couple ideas I'm toying with right now for some little more interesting original stuff. Awesome. I just watched the reaction that you put out. Uh, I watched it like the day or, two, day or two ago, and I was so glad to see that you had such a good, genuine, like you, you enjoyed that direct so much too. Oh, I, it, it broke my brain. It broke my brain in the best way possible. <laughs> so everyone, everyone who's made it to the end of this video, you can subscribe to us if you want, but go subscribe to Kevin in, in, instead. If you're going to subscribe to one, subscribe to him because you, you're really going to like what he's putting out. Uh, I agree. Yeah, no, subscribe. <laughs> yeah, I'm the right choice here. <laughs> they, they, they should. That's not a lie. Please go subscribe to Kevin. Uh, but of course, if, also, if you did enjoy this video and you, you did decide that you had uh, the heart to subscribe to two channels, uh, that would be cool. You could always click uh, click our button as well. Uh, but we'll leave a link in the description down below for Kevin's channel. So please go give him some love. Thank you all so much for watching. And thank you, Kevin, for coming along on this adventure. I'm Zeon from Nintendo Life. Stay safe out there and we will see you next time. Later. Oh,